Hello, Stu here from DIYmusic.co.uk. We've got another FL Studio tutorial for you today. This time it's uh, part two of the introduction to the Fruity Pad Controller, or FPC, as it's known. Um, if you haven't seen part one, go and check that out. We've already looked at loading samples, uh, assigning notes to, uh, to trigger the samples, assigning that to a MIDI device or piano roll, and also routing uh, different pads to different mixer tracks. I'll just show you. what we've got is an FPC kit. We've loaded up four, um, whoops, uh, four beats, samples. And we've got piano roll controlling that as well as this, so. But that's all in last week's tutorial, so uh, have a look at that. Right, uh, so this time we're going to have a look at the, uh, the main pad properties in FPC. And they're all across here. So we'll just go through them one at a time. First of all, you've got the pad selector. So you can choose a pad by clicking on it and getting up all the properties here. Or you can scroll through by pushing these uh, left and right arrows. You can hover over here and use your mouse uh, scroller, and that'll scroll through as well. If you click on here or here, I don't know why they bother putting that, but you get the menu. This gives you a few options, changing the names, loading different pads, some more complicated stuff that we'll look at in uh, probably in another tutorial. And uh, you can also select directly the pad that you want to edit. So I've, you can see it shows I've only loaded up one, two, three, six, <clears throat> six samples. And I can go straight to one of those if I wanted to, uh, to play around with it. Here you have the name. Uh, you can click that to play it, or you can right click to change the name. So uh, all that kick too, just to show. That also shows up in the piano roll as the name. Yeah, which is quite handy. Okay, after that, you have the uh, pad volume. And the pan. I'm changing the one I'm, uh, I haven't selected, so. Reset that. Uh, this M here mutes the particular pad that you've got chosen. So if we were playing uh, with the kick muted, I'll just play a loop. Alternatively, if you just wanted to hear that selected pad, you could solo it, which is this one. Scale volume should usually be on unless you are using some velocity sensitive triggering, which is another complicated thing we'll have a look at later. Um, what this means is that the volume of the sample will uh, be linked to the velocity of uh, the trigger. So for example, we've got a kick. I'll just put one in. So the velocity is here. If I turn that down, the sample is quieter. I mean, it's fairly obvious, but if you're doing something a bit more complicated, you might want to switch that off because you might be triggering different samples depending on the velocity. Um, one thing in the last tutorial, I was uh, using my little pad here to play the drums. And I wanted to show that it was uh, velocity sensitive so that the lighter you hit it, the quieter it was. It wasn't doing that, and the reason I realized was because of my MIDI settings. Now in here, 
I've actually got link note on velocity to none. So even though I'm hitting this very gently or very hard, it's not making any difference to the velocity the uh, the Fruity Loops picks up because that's on none. If I change it to velocity, then you should notice that the quieter I uh, tap the pad, the quieter the sample is triggered. So that's why that didn't work in my last video. I prefer it off because uh, with these kind of drums, I'm not really, I'm not really looking to have a lot of velocity change. Okay, that was a slight detour. So that could come into play if you were triggering different samples depending on the velocity of the, uh, the note, the MIDI note you're sending to it. Okay, the next bit on here is we've looked at this a little bit. So you've got MIDI note. This is where you select the note that triggers the, um, the sample. Uh, one thing I didn't show you last time, I used Learn to uh, allow you to click that and then hit the pad to learn <clears throat> uh, which note was going to trigger that sample. If you wanted to do a few of those in a row, you could actually uh, choose Map Notes for Entire Bank by here. And what that does is let you go through one at a time and it maps uh, in numerical order, so one, two, three, four, five, to whichever pads you hit or keys or whatever. So for example, I'll just show you, I'll use the keyboard here. So map notes for entire bank. And now I can start with uh, that one. Now I've run out of samples, so it's not actually triggering anything. If you only want to do so much, you click here and cancel map notes for entire bank, and then you're done. So now those are all mapped, but they're not mapped to these anymore, so I'm going to put those back. It's all my, it's all my samples. Cancel. Now that's working again. So that's that part. Now, uh, cut and cut by is very useful if you want uh, to sound a little realistic with something like hi-hat. So basically, cut sets a cut group for your pad. That can be anything up to 100, I guess, up to 99. Cut by tells the pad which other pad is going to stop the sample playing. So it's easier if I just show you, by example, on my pads five and six, I've got a closed and an open hi-hat. Now, obviously, in a real hi-hat, uh, if you hit it closed, it's going to stop the open, which is what you want. So we'll select the closed and set that to cut group one. Now we select the open hi-hat. And we'll select, uh, we'll set that cut by to one. So what we're telling it there is that when this sample is playing, if you trigger any sample which is in cut group one, it'll stop playing. You should be able to hear that now. Can you hear the hi hat stops as soon as the closed one is triggered. So that's what cut and cut by are for. Uh, very useful if you're doing drums or you could maybe have some other effects if you wanted a certain sample to be stopped by another sample. Obviously you experiment, you play around, do what you want to do with that. So the last bit across here is output and we actually looked at that already. This is the offset mixer track that your uh, sample gets played through. So we've already set one for the snare of one, this hi-hat of two. These two hi-hats are still going through there, so let's put them through the other hi-hat mixer by going back to FPC, selecting and output offset of two, two. You can already hear the EQ taking effect.
there you go. They're now coming out too. So um, yeah, we did already cover that, but just in case you missed it, that's what the offset, uh, what the output offset changes. So that is that's actually about ten minutes. So I'm going to leave it there for part two. I think in the next part we'll have a look at this little area down here, which is where you can set the volume envelopes for your samples, uh, which is pretty cool. And if we have time, we'll look at some layering as well, or that might be another video afterwards. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Um, check out my website, diymusic.co.uk. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, just look for the links um, in either below the video or, or on my, uh, my website. If you've got any questions, there's a number of ways you can get them to me. You can comment on the video comment on the website or find me on Facebook, either uh, on my page or in any of the groups that uh, we've got going on there. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.